Hello, everyone. I'm um, Jenny Tenson, CEO at the Open Data Institute. We're a small not-for-profit based in London, and we work to build a strong, fair, and sustainable data economy where data gets to the people who really need it. Um, Paul's been talking about how much more data there is um, out there and will be in the future. More data being collected through different kinds of sensors, through the devices in our pockets. Um, more standards that are going to be around for machine, to make that data machine readable, to make it understandable. And of course, the novel products and services that can be built on top of that data. Those are all really powerful and interesting things. For us, though, um, what we really care about at the Open Data Institute is access to that data and who has access to that data. This is a diagram that we use to explain the different kinds of levels of access to data that you can have. At one end, then, there's data that is closed within a particular organization. At the other end, data that is open for everyone to access and use and share. And in the middle, a large range of different types of access that you can have for different kinds of purposes, whether that's access that I have to my data that is about me and my journeys, for example, or whether it's data that is available and made available to researchers because researchers should have better access than maybe commercial companies. Um, or data that is shared publicly and available to uh, get hold of, but that has tiny terms and conditions around how it can be used, what we call public access. It doesn't matter whether data is big data or small data or medium-sized data. It doesn't matter whether the data comes from government, whether it comes from us, whether it comes from commercial organizations. We have to be thinking about where, how data should be accessed for benefit. For benefit for all of us, for benefit for companies, for benefit for governments too. And this, we think, is the big challenge around the data economy. Not how much data is being collected, but how do we share it so that it gets to the people that need it. Of course, we've seen some models where data has been made open and available for everyone to access, use, and share. And that's led to a, a proliferation of applications that can help us with the kinds of mobility challenges that Paul was talking about. City Mapper is, of course, my favorite example because it was built around the open data that was made available by TFL, has grown um, around the world, still making use of open data and still um, benefiting from open data that is available in particular cities, and is looking at different kinds of ways of integrating with public transport through the um, recent City Mapper bus that you may have seen. So making data available in different ways opens up opportunities for us to try different models of, of provision of transport. And the access to that data is all important. Paul was talking about IT as being infrastructure uh, that we don't really notice except when it goes wrong. Um, we view data as being infrastructure, the data that we can have access to the data that we can get hold of is infrastructure. We notice when it goes missing, when we no longer have access to that data. And it's not just important for a small subsection of the digital economy. It's not just important to the startups in Shoreditch. It's important across every single sector. So we view data as infrastructure for the economy as a whole. And what do we do about infrastructure? Well, you guys working in transport, you know transport infrastructure. You know what it takes to maintain that and to make it available for maximum benefit. Um, the, we tend to use transport infrastructure and specifically road infrastructure as an analogy for what the kinds of things we need to care about with data infrastructure. So whereas roads help us navigate to some location that we want to get to, 
we think about data as helping us to navigate to some decision that we need to make, whether it's what form of transport you take in the morning because of that weather data or because you know that there are some roadblocks or whatever. Um, Having access to that data enables us to make better decisions it may, and it enables us to make decisions faster. So if data is like roads, and data is infrastructure like roads are infrastructure, um, our current state of data across uh, lots of the data that we want is like this type of road. It is um, hard to navigate. It is hard to use. It slows us down. It is poor quality. One of the things that we have to address with the data that we have is how to improve that quality um, so that we can use it more easily and more efficiently. And if we think about this analogy of, of data as infrastructure, like our road network is a, is a um, is a bunch of interconnected roads that help us to get to locations we need strategically interconnected and strategically invested in. Similarly, our data infrastructure needs to be strategically interconnected. We need to have data sets that are connected together by using common identifiers and common standards, for example. It needs to be strategically planned and invested in. We need to identify where data is so important for a large number of decisions that we should be building the motorway, right? We should be building something that is high quality that lots of people can use. But viewing data as being infrastructure isn't just about the data that is available. It's also about the rules of the road. It's also about the rules that we use about using that data whether those are rules around privacy, whether they are around making sure it's uh, securely used, around sharing. Um, we, need the, we need those rules, we need those governance structures, we need organizations that maintain and help our data infrastructure to grow in just the same way as we have with our transport infrastructure. Um, but we don't tend to think of data as infrastructure in general. So we, and, we, and it's a new thing. We, we don't have those organizations in place right now. These are the things that are the real big challenges for us in the future. Now, there are some starts to this. Um, so what we are starting to see is uh, things like government taking proactive steps to say, actually, this data is so important that we are going to make some regulation about its availability. The Bus Services Act gives the Secretary of State the power to require bus services, bus service providers, to make certain types of information available. And that, that's, a, that's thinking about what data we need as part of our infrastructure to support transport. This is happening in other sectors too. We're doing a work at the moment um, with Sport England who are investing in um, making data about physical activity opportunities available as open data for everyone to benefit from. That's because they recognize that that data infrastructure, those pieces of data are important for helping people to get more active. You can't get more active if you don't know where to go and get more active. So making that data available is part of a strategic decision to, um, to achieve that objective of getting people more active by providing information for free for everyone as open data. Or in the agriculture and nutrition arena, which I spend a lot of my time in, um, there are activities like GoDan. This is the Global Open Data in Agriculture and Nutrition Initiative. It's an initiative that works across the globe to try and address huge challenges that we have about making sure that we can feed the world in 20 years' time. Um, and this is a, a, a group of organizations, not just CSOs, but companies too, recognizing that they have to think about what data is available for everyone in order to meet those challenges. And that by working together, we can meet those challenges much better. So this is my 
challenge for, for you and I think the challenge that we have to address, not only in transport, but actually across lots of sectors, is what kind of data future do we want to have and what should we be aiming towards? Um, we can have, uh, we're going to have a future where there is a mixed model of access to data. There will be some data that nobody outside an organization will get access to, and that's right. There will be data that you have to pay to get access to because it supports a business model. There will be data that is available openly and accessible for everyone to, to use in whatever way they want. Um, but how we choose which types of data go into those three buckets and where we place our emphasis will determine how much we can really take advantage of the data that we're pulling together and that's going to be um, even more important to us in the future. Thank you.